Hi guys, this is here, me, Minister Kevin Ewing again. I tried to record this earlier, but I keep messing up on me. Anyway, nevertheless, I'm here today to address a question that was sent to me by one of uh, my followers. Uh, one wrote me a detailed email, and it was concerning dreams, basically asking me, what does it mean when you have dreams where you see uh, in your home that you're currently at, where you see particular animals or creatures such as snakes, dogs or alligators, but of course they're not there in real life, you only see them in a dream. Someone had sent me a similar uh, uh, question, but the only difference between these two dreams was this person was seeing these entities in their workplace and, and amazingly where they would see these particular creatures such as a lion or always some snake it would always be in the offices or the space that their colleagues or co-workers who somehow present challenges to them they will only see it either in their spaces or following these particular people and the questions in both of these cases was kevin what does that mean does that have any spiritual significance well yes it does have a lot of spiritual significance and i decided to do this short video so to give the general audience and, and particularly these two people, some spiritual clarity on what's happening here. And in order to explain this, I, I need to go by uh, a particular scripture that will give you more clarity in my answer. So I want you to turn to Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37, and we're going to be reading from verse 1 to verse 10. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to verse 10. I, I hope you guys like this view. I thought it would have been nice. I was hoping that that cloud was in there so you could actually see the sun setting. But nevertheless, hopefully that cloud would move and you'll actually see the sun setting. But don't you pay no attention to that. <laughs> you pay attention <laughs> to what I'm saying to you right now because it's very, very important for you to hear. Okay, again, Kevin, what does it mean if I'm having a dream? I'm in my current home. I'm not in a former home. So I know it is in backwardness. I'm in my current home. And I see this huge snake, like a python, in my particular uh, bedroom or bathroom or whatever. Or I would see uh, some dog in the dream walking through my home. And I could see these things, but for some reason they cannot see me. I see these creatures on the job. Okay, so Ezekiel chapter 37, beginning at verse 1, it says, The hand of the Lord was upon me. The hand of the Lord was upon who? Because we need clarity here. Ezekiel is saying that the hand of the Lord was upon him. Now, is God a physical being? No, he isn't. God is a spirit. So immediately from the jump of the scripture, it's, it's now pointing us in a direction that when we read the scripture, we got to see it for what it really is. Meaning that what, what is about to be said isn't from a natural perspective. The scripture is now taking us into the spiritual realm via an experience that Ezekiel had with God, okay? Meaning that when he said the hand of the Lord was upon him, or the hand of the Lord took him somewhere, it didn't carry his physical body in this particular instance. What it did was to take his spirit into a realm, the spiritual realm, and cause him to see things that was pulling the strings to his physical world. It was showing him the root. I, I preach this all the time too. It's showing him the root cause of the things going on in his world or his life. So he says here, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and listen now, and carried me, that's a movement, carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. Now this is powerful. Excuse me, because it's saying here, while his physical body would have been stationary at wherever he was at that time, his spiritual man was not limited to where he was stationary. And the spirit of the Lord, of the hand of the Lord, took uh, Ezekiel's spirit into the realm of the spirit to show him things that he would have never known under normal circumstances. I'm just trying to check my levels here to make sure I'm not too loud. Okay? All right, great. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out of the out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. So spiritually God took him into the spiritual realm and sat him in a valley that was filled with bones. Very frustrating, very confusing. I'm sure he didn't understand what was happening. Verse 2 says, and caused me, who caused you to do this? Christ, Jesus, sorry, God. And God caused me to pass by them round about and behold, there were very many or many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. 
So God now began to take him and give him a cross view, length, breadth, whatever, of these bones. And he said there were many, many dry bones in this valley. But the point I'm trying to make here, this is not a physical event like you seeing me physically right now, or you seeing that physical sky in the back there, or these physical dry trees in the back here. It's not a situation like that. It's like God taking my spirit out of me right now, and I fall to the ground. I'm not dead. I'm asleep. And he takes my spirit into the spiritual world and begin to show me the components that's pulling the strings to the things that's going on in this physical world. However, but it's from a spiritual perspective. Okay. Verse 3 says, And he which is God said unto me, which is Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, who is I? Ezekiel answered, O Lord God, God O Lord God, thou knowest. Verse 4. Again, he said to me, God said to Ezekiel, he says, now prophesy, I like this, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now, this is powerful. This is so powerful because here we're getting a, a, a first hand lesson via God through this experience in Ezekiel's life how we could get in the realm of the spirit and speak to certain situations to bring about the desired change we want in the physical realm this is so powerful i am loving this already <laughs> so watch this now watch this now in verse 4 he says again he god said unto me ezekiel prophesy upon these bones and say unto them O ye dry bones hear the word of the lord verse 5 of ezekiel 37 Thus said the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews or strength upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 7. So I prophesy, this is Ezekiel now, Ezekiel says, now in the realm of the spirit, there's these heap of bones here in this dry valley, and he's prophesying or speaking the word of God, which is life, over these dry bones. All right, watch this now, verse 7. So he prophesied, so I prophesied and I was as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Verse 8 of Ezekiel 37. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews or the strength, and the flesh came up upon them. What is them? The bones. And the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Verse 9. Then said he, which is God, unto me, Ezekiel, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus said the Lord God, come from the four winds. Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Verse 10, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon the feet, an exceeding great army. Let's just, just go to verse 11. Then he, which is God, said unto me, which was Ezekiel, son of man, he is now giving the revelation to Ezekiel, would Ezekiel, through following the voice of the Lord thy God, the changes that Ezekiel had no idea that he was making in the spiritual world, based on what he saw in the spiritual world, via him prophesying as a result of what God said to him, watch the changes that he was making physically. Watch this now. Verse 11 says, Then he said unto me, or God said unto Ezekiel, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore, verse 12, prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your grave, O my people, and brought you up out of the graves. Verse 14, and shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that the Lord hath spoken it, and perform it, saith the Lord. Now, I want to stop right there, because I just want to quickly do this. As you can see, we're going to use this particular passage of Scripture 
as uh, an example or as a platform or even foundation of what I'm saying to you. What those two people saw in the dream was God was showing them the evil that is in their home spiritually that they cannot see. However, via the dream or even if it was a vision, if they were, if they were actually uh, conscious in seeing this, uh, just like this guy here, Ezekiel, God is showing you, man, do not be limited to this physical world. I repeat the scripture to you over and over by this awesome man of God who was so uh, keen in the spiritual warfare, the Apostle Paul, 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. What did he say? Set not your eyes on the things that are seen, for the things that are seen are temporal. They are subject to change. Instead, he said, to focus on the unseen world. Those things over there are eternal. The, 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 the activities in that world is bringing about the results that we see in this world. So in this particular scripture, Ezekiel said God took him into the spiritual realm and showed him a whole heap of bones in the valley. But God began to reveal to him in verse 12. He said, these bones that you saw in the spiritual realm, these are actual the people of Israel. This is my Hebrew people. And they're saying, in reality, we have no strength. How are we going to go back to our land? So you, Mr. Prophet here, I'm telling you now, these snakes you see in the dream, people who gave me these two dreams, these evil uh, beasts you see in the dream, these are all symbolic of evil demonic forces. God is showing you from the spiritual side of life, the, re the real reality of life, not what you see. He's showing you from a spiritual perspective, these are the spirits that look like a snake, that look like a, a horse or whatever. These are the spirits influencing these people. This is what you need to come against. Not these people, this big snake you see in your bathroom or in your room or your closet or whatever. This is this, not only a monitoring spirit, but this is the forces that's bringing division in your home, between you and your husband, or whatever the case may be. Whatever uh, issue you're having, God is showing you these are the creatures that has taken on the appearances of these animals. This is what's challenging you in the spiritual world. This is what's coming at you. So just like Ezekiel, because Ezekiel is only laying on a form of how we should deal with it. So what we saw in that dream, when we saw that big snake hiding in the bathroom or whatever, now only the dreamer could see it, nobody else. So the God is saying, just like he's prophesy, I bind you spirit of the whatever it is, you come against it, but you're coming at it against from a spiritual perspective, which is the root of what's going on there. So to answer the question, very simple. What these people are viewing or observing in their dreams, it is the evil forces. It is nothing good about uh, these things. However, God is allowing these people to see from a spiritual perspective via the format of their dream, the evil of the enemy, okay? And, and, and how he's right there in plain spiritual sight. And God is now showing you how to prophesy. So guess what? Ezekiel, God said to him now, in the natural, the children of Israel may feel weak. They are because they're relying on your, their own strength. But Ezekiel, you, I have put an anointing on you. And the words that you speak, they, they, I, I'm going to back these words. So Ezekiel, I'm telling you now, you prophesy. You, you say what I say. You don't just prophesy any garbage. You speak exactly what I tell you to speak. And you're going to see. When these bones, just how these bones are coming together in the unseen world, which the seen world are not privy to, but you are right now because I'm allowing this. Just like how you see it happening here, Mr. Ezekiel, you're going to see it happen in the natural. You're going to see things come together in the natural. But these people of Israel have no idea that there was some alterations in the spiritual world that gave this manifestation that you see in this physical.